Rangers are victorious, which is mm. fantastic in extra innings. Getting there was a bit of a struggle. So my question for y'all to kick it off, short, long-term, however you want to break it down, what's the bigger problem for the Rangers? Is it Seager's hamstring or needing to find a closer? So I, I, this is my personal opinion. I texted with you guys yesterday about this too. Will Smith, I feel, will be the closer before May 15th is my call. The reason I say it is he has experience as a closer. He was Bochy's closer in San Francisco. Uh, I was there with that. And so I know that there's a lot of trust in Will. Uh, obviously, you saw what he did. He did close out the one inning for us, get the hold. Um, I, I personally think, he, yeah, he probably could have stayed out there. I know he could have got the job done. Nothing against LeClerc and uh, Hernandez. Those guys are the other opportunity or guys to have the opportunity to be a closer. But I just think after what Bochi has actually experienced with Will gives him that slight advantage. You know, it's interesting. Last night, I want to talk to you, Derek, about this because Choppy asked me in a text during the game before, I guess LeClerc had given up the, the run to tie up the game. But he's yes. like, why didn't he give LeClerc the clean inning? I said, I said, first of all, Bochi and Will Smith have a good relationship. I said, if, if you didn't really know the pitcher, like let's just say Jonathan Hernandez, who didn't have a good outing last night, but you're not sure if he can go back out. I was wondering this. Will Smith, what an emotional moment. If you saw how emotional he was, he comes in with the bases loaded, nobody out. Yes, a run did score, but he gets two big strikeouts. That's still, yeah. And you could see the emotion of getting out of that was still the lead. And I was just wondering, Derek, because I was like, you know what's tough is when you, as a reliever, have that much emotion after getting that big of a strikeout, and you think your job is probably over. Let's be honest. You probably think your job is over. You came in with bases loaded, nobody out, and you got out of that situation, and your team still had the lead. It's sometimes sitting down and going, hey, I want you to get one more guy. And look, you're a professional. You got to go out there and do it. But sometimes you lose a little bit of that adrenaline rush that you just had in that situation. So, yes, Will Smith gave up a base hit to well, start off the ninth inning. but They call it the adrenaline dump. You hear that all the time. Is I could absolutely see that. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's, he's got the experience. So with what you were just saying, any other person you know that hasn't really gotten the closer experience that he's had, would have like the difficulty of, you know, they think they're done. They're going to go check out. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, we need you to get one more hitter. You got to check back in. And that's where it gets messed up. Whereas Will knows, and most veteran guys know that, or actually all veteran guys know this too. You're not out of the game until Bochi shakes your hand, or in this case, Maddox would shake your hand and say, Hey, that's it. Until then you stay locked in. So that's why I think it was, you know, Will's job, I think to go back out there. And then obviously we're still early in the season. We want to see who the, the closer role right now is is LeClerc, right? Yes. So they're going to give him that opportunity. Tenuous, right? Right. It feels like it could be one of those three guys that we were talking about a second ago. But right now it's set up on LeClerc. So they're going to give him that opportunity. This is his time to go out there and do the job. He did everything he really needed to. I mean, yeah, a couple pitches got away from him, but he's still, I, I wouldn't uh, close the door on him yet. The other thing, too, I do want to say, hey, thank you, Kansas City, for taking Chapman out for the second. Woo! He looks like Cincinnati, Chicago. Yes, he was uh, looking good. This I mean, now. he was up to 102 yesterday. We weren't hitting him. I hate saying it, but, yeah, we were not sniffing anything he was throwing. And so uh, for them to swap that out, hey, thank you. And you got to really give a lot of credit to Heim, too, for the— Actually, Young deserves a lot of credit, too, for getting the walk. Yeah. That was and big. Heim had—I mean, this is where baseball's so fun now is that— Heim had a big block pitch of Massey was up mm -hmm. and Will Smith spiked a, a breaking ball down and away uh, into yeah. the right-handers batter's box. And Heim slides over and blocks it. That's with bases loaded, one run lead, and one out. If Heim doesn't block that pitch, and this gives your team a lot of confidence, Derek, we can talk about this as pitchers. If Heim misses that, not that you're never going to spike a breaking ball again or not trust, you know, throwing a breaking but ball. It's in the not going to be as likely. But there's a lot of new pitchers on this team. And seeing Jonah protect you there and keep the bases loaded, and then you get the strikeout of Massey and then the strikeout of the next guy. Like, that was a huge – because if he doesn't block that ball, it's a tie game yes. second and third one out. That's a huge difference like in the game. or whatever from so, losing the lead. Heim hits the homer, but Heim also had a big block in that situation. I think you're asking a great question. I will lean towards – we, I'll lean towards we need to know how long Corey Seager could possibly be out before answering the question. Okay, let me fire. Let's go ahead and fire off cut number one because 
Corey Seager, with this hit, actually accomplished something super cool, but I know that's not going to be the focus. As Seager lines one toward the left field corner, there are no Royals anywhere near the left field corner. Seager stumbles and he's hurt. Seager stumbled coming around first. He hobbles into second and stops right there. You know what's really interesting about that? Even in the midst of a double, you it feels like you can audibly hear the crowd oh, yeah. take note of the injury. So You could hear it live there at the game. Yeah. It was instantly like, Crap. this is a bad comparison, but it's like you could hear the gunshot and then he was down. Like, And instantly everybody was just quiet. And yeah. also... We talked about this yesterday with Boach. He hit the ball down a line where they only have outfielders yep. playing in the gaps because they're playing that kind of outfielder in that shallow second base position. And so you're like, oh, my gosh, this is an easy triple mm -hmm. right here. And unfortunately, now, that happened. So we can get into the timeline. One just positive thing, because I know it's going to get lost in all of this. This was the fifth straight game that Corey Seager had an extra base hit and a walk. That ties Rafael Palmero for the most in team history. And the American League record, I think, is Babe Ruth with seven. So, like... Babe Ruth owns that record, yeah, too? That, remember, he's he always is. running so far. Oh, yeah, he was running is, really fast. So that's Show astonishing. going to get it, see? It's, I can see that. So that's astonishing. But the more pressing issue will be how long did he miss? And I know the Dallas Morning News had brought up in 2019, he had a left hamstring issue and he missed a month. So in my mind, that's what I thought of. I don't Same. have any scientific or medical data to back that up, Just though. So that he's like, you feel like he's completely healthy again. Like it usually feels like it takes that long when it's hamstrings, whenever it's soft tissue like that. Yeah. Uh, the I guess for me, and I, not the Royals necessarily, but for other you know really good teams, because we know what Mike thinks about the Royals. Um, the uh, he, he was hitting three fifty seven. You take that bat out of the lineup, do the Rangers still look like as imposing if you're an opposing pitcher to them? Or are you like, you know what, I can get around this a little bit? Because we were saying, what, Mike, there were about five guys that you're like, okay. But then the bottom part of the lineup was still doing well, too. So I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of curious as an opposing pitcher if you're looking at this lineup a little differently without him for a while. I'd say, Derek, yes, because you're now, whether Josh Smith leads off and you, and you put Simeon and Nate Lowe and Seager, as you take you're the best hitter out of the lineup always helps. That's why sometimes, Derek, on Sundays, even though your best hitter might not be in the lineup, someday Sundays, at least on paper, you're facing an easier lineup because it's a day game, a guy is going to get a rest, or a couple guys that are everyday guys get a rest. So, yes, this now puts a little bit more pressure on the back half of the lineup that's been hitting great to hit great, but now you don't have to worry about Seager coming up after Simeon. Yeah, it definitely helps uh, as a pitcher, but I think just because of how the hitters have, I mean, we hit really good at home. That's the thing. So it's more of now, let's see how we bounce back because on the road, I mean, it sucks because we have a small sample, but the three games we didn't really do as well. So let's see what we can do when we go to Houston. Especially with the rivalry. How does Boach handle the road? Like, does he, is he like, bedtime at 9 o'clock, boys? Like, how does, I don't know. You don't get back to the no. hotel till like 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Bo Boach is. <laughs> that would be tough, Corey. That would be tough. Bo Boach is. We're, we're, I mean, I don't think people realize how lucky we are to have the two coaches that we have with Boach and Maddox. Like, Boach is going to do an outstanding job of getting guys where they need to be, setting up things. There's going to be times where, yeah, we're probably going to go, well, why did he do this? And we won't understand some of his moves, but I promise you there's a process in what he's doing because he's he's very knowledgeable of the game. That's for sure. Yeah. He pays attention to a lot of the details. Um, and then it's the same thing with Maddox. Like Maddox does such an outstanding job with pitching. Like I was blessed to learn so much from him by watching and learning and then obviously being a part of it. He's going to get those guys under control. I mean, yeah, I know Hernandez didn't have exactly the, the inning he wanted to have, but he was dealing with a little bit of adversity. Mike went out and talked to him, tried to cool him off. Just how it is. Baseball is just one of those games. But Mike is such a outstanding coach when it comes to the scouting report, preparing the guys. So they all know what they're doing going forward. Just, Kevin, with us, it does sound like Bruce Bochy's still trying to get to know the guys. Like, he even kind oh, of... for sure. You know, he's like, look, I did get to know them through spring, but yeah. now I get to really see them in, like, intense situations well, it's and more of, how they handle those. Yeah, it's more of the test run. It's early in the season. We're going to try a lot of different things out just to get things going. It's not... And now, Grant, when I say it's a test run, I don't want people thinking, oh, so we're just going to take the first month of the test. <laughs> no, that's not what we're doing. It's just he's feeling things out, which 
okay, this can work with this guy. This can't work with this guy. So now I know I can't do that with him or whatever. To your point, last year and the years before with Chris Woodward, and it was what was given to him. It felt way more of a developmental team. And so Jonathan oh, Hernandez sure. yesterday after the first three guys get on, you felt like Woody would have just said, well, I got to see if he can work out of this. If we lose the game, we lose the game. Yeah. And Bochy's like, no, 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 no. We got ourselves a win here. I'm going to put in Will yes. Smith and try to get this win. Where last year, whether it was Woody's decision, whether it was an organizational decision, it was kind of like, well, let's just see what happens and keep him in here for five or six batters. And so I loved last night when Will Smith immediately came in after Hernandez had to face three batters. You're like, hey, we got to figure out a way how to get out of this situation with a different guy. And with that, too, uh, Bochy's going to literally push guys and see, like, okay, that was the situation. We know we can't handle this. So we're going to come back to you and let him try it again in a different way. That's the thing, too. And like Mike said, we're going for the win. We're getting the win. And they did.